Hello, welcome to our second session on the topic of holiness, where we're going to consider, hopefully in a contemplative manner, the question of holiness. And today, the question of whether you and I, all of us, are called to holiness, or whether rather holiness is the preserve of some select few. Of course, it's a very important topic. And there is this, or there has been, a conception that holiness was the preserve of some very select kind of unusual people. At least that was the dominant thinking for a period in the church, probably up till the end of the Second Vatican Council. And perhaps in a particular way, those called to religious life uh, were seen as the ones who were serious about holiness and holiness was really their preserve. So we're going to look, we're going to look at sacred scripture. We're going to look a little bit at the holiness, at holiness in the development of the church's teaching uh, through its history. And then very briefly at what it says in the Second Vatican Council. First of all, in sacred scripture, what is very clear, and even in the Old Testament, is that holiness is for everyone, at least that is the whole of Israel. They're called to form a holy people. You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy, it says in the Old Testament. And remember that all the observant Jews prayed the famous Shema prayer every day, the most famous prayer for all Jews, really, which is an affirmation of this call to love God with our whole heart. Remember that prayer is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, from the book of Deuteronomy. And so all the observant Jews are praying that prayer every day. A reminder, all are called to love God completely, which is, of course, holiness. Then in the gospel, our Lord continues to call all people to holiness, even though at times there's been a uh, a perception that some were called to just, as it were, be saved and others were called to be perfect. However, for example, in the scene of the rich young man, if you remember the scene where this young guy comes up to our Lord asking, what do I do to inherit eternal life? And our Lord says, well, follow the commandments, etc. And if you wish to be perfect, leave everything, sell your property, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. However, properly understood, that's really a particular vocation this fellow has. In other words, his way to holiness. All are called to holiness. Not all are called to give away all their property. In his case, in his particular case, he was called. In other words, his particular vocation was a call to radical poverty, holiness through radical po poverty. Others, think of even St. Joseph, are not called to holiness through radical poverty. Then when we look at the development of the, this idea of whether or not all Christians are called to be saints. Certainly the church had never thought in its 2,000 years of history that there were some people who could not become saints, that there were some Christians who could not become saints. That was the teaching of a heretical sect known as the Gnostics. And certainly the Gnostics were no, no friend of, of the Orthodox teaching. However, it is true that what we know is the universal call to holiness, that is all men and all women are called to sanctity or holiness, wasn't made very clear. It wasn't very clear certainly that this applied to the ordinary faithful. So, for example, a famous legal textbook of the 12th century by a fellow called Gratian, it said there are two types of Christians. One who uh, serve God through contemplation and prayer and, and they're made up the, the monks and clerics and the others who are the laity, they're the rest and they're allowed, it is licit for them to marry, to cultivate the earth. They're permitted to possess earthly goods. But that is hardly a ringing declaration of the universal call to holiness. It's not very clear where they, the poor lay people fit in there, whereas the monks, the clerics are praying and they're contemplating and they're doing all these things. The lady look like hangers-on, really. This is, to some degree, put right by two particular saints in the more modern period, and they are the famous St. Francis de Sales and St. Alphonsus de Liguri. So St. Francis in the 17th century and the St. Alphonsus in the following century, the 18th century. Both say quite similar things, in fact. And St. Alphonsus, he's got this lovely line where he says, whoever does not keep in his heart the desire to become a saint may be a Christian, but not a good Christian. 
Very nice little distinction there. So all lay people, monks, clerics, everybody are called to desire sanctity. While there was, this was a great advance, still there's no holiness, you could say, custom made for lay people. It's always an adaptation of what was happening with the monks and the clerics and so on. A bit of a um, cast off, like hand-me-down clothing or something for the lay people. It was St. Maria Scriva in the, in the last century, in the 20th century, who makes it very, very clear that there is a holiness which belongs to lay people themselves. It's not the cast-offs from the clerics or the, the monks, the religious. The way that St. John Paul I summed it up very nicely in talking about St. Maria, he said that St. Francis almost always suggests to lay people the same means used by the religious with appropriate adaptations. Escriva is more radical. He even speaks of materializing, in a good sense, sanctification. For him, what has to be transformed into prayer and holiness is work itself. And what he says there, what St. Maria is saying, is kind of endorsed really by the Second Vatican Council. A council whose particular objective, according to St. Paul VI, was the universal call to holiness. So it's very interesting that St. Paul VI actually said that, quote unquote, the particular objective of the council's teaching and, as it were, its ultimate purpose were precisely this, the Christian vocation and call to holiness of everybody, not just the few, the religious and so on, those kind of professionals in sanctity. And then a little quote to finish from Lumen Gentium in the Second Vatican Council says it very, very clearly, all Christians in any state or walk of life are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of charity. That really is quite revolutionary. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.